Epiglottitis is a potentially life-threatening condition characterized by inflammation and swelling of the epiglottis, which is a small cartilaginous structure located at the base of the tongue that plays a crucial role in the process of swallowing and breathing. The epiglottis is positioned just above the larynx and behind the base of the tongue. Its primary role is to act as a dynamic valve, redirecting food and liquids away from the trachea, or windpipe, and towards the esophagus during swallowing. This seemingly simple action is vital for preventing aspiration, where food or drink enters the lungs, potentially causing serious respiratory complications. When epiglottitis occurs, the inflammation isn't limited to just the epiglottis itself. The surrounding tissues, including the base of the tongue, pharynx, and larynx, can also become swollen and inflamed. This widespread swelling in the upper airway can rapidly progress to a medical emergency as the airway narrows and breathing becomes increasingly difficult and, in extreme cases, it can cause respiratory failure. Causes of epiglottitis The causes of epiglottitis are varied, but infections remain the most common trigger. Historically, hemophilus influenza type B, or HIB, was the primary culprit, especially in children. This bacteria could quickly colonize the throat and cause severe inflammation. While HIV is now rare in vaccinated populations, other bacteria can still cause epiglottitis. These include Streptococcus pneumonia, Staphylococcus aureus, and Group A Streptococci. In adults, the causes of epiglottitis are often more diverse. Bacterial infections still play a role, but other factors come into play. Viral infections, while less common, can also result in epiglottitis. Viruses such as herpes simplex virus and varicella zoster virus, which causes chickenpox and shingles, have been found in some cases. In rare instances, fungal infections may contribute to epiglottitis. Candida species, the fungi responsible for common yeast infections, can sometimes cause inflammation in the upper airway, including the epiglottis. This is more likely to occur in individuals with weakened immune systems or those on long-term antibiotic therapy. Non-infectious causes are more common in adults, too. These include trauma to the throat area, which can happen from swallowing very hot liquids or foods. Chemical burns resulting from the accidental ingestion of caustic substances can also lead to severe inflammation of the epiglottis and surrounding tissues. Symptoms of epiglottitis The symptoms of epiglottitis typically come on quickly and can be quite severe. The most prominent symptom is usually a very sore throat. This isn't just any sore throat. People often describe it as the worst sore throat they've ever experienced. It can feel like there's something stuck in the throat or a sense of fullness at the back of the mouth. As the condition progresses, swallowing becomes increasingly painful and difficult. This can lead to drooling as people find it hard to swallow their own saliva. The pain and difficulty swallowing can make eating and drinking nearly impossible. Breathing difficulties are another key symptom of epiglottitis. As the epiglottis swells, it starts to obstruct the airway. This can cause a characteristic breathing pattern. People with epiglottitis often lean forward and stick out their chin. They might open their mouth wide, trying to get more air. This position is sometimes called the tripod position, because it looks like the person is using their arms to support themselves, forming a tripod shape. The breathing might become noisy with a high-pitched sound called stridor. This sound happens as air tries to squeeze past the swollen epiglottis. It's often more noticeable when the person breathes in. Fever is common in epiglottitis. Body temperature can rise quickly, often above 101 degrees Fahrenheit, or 38.3 degrees Celsius. The combination of fever, severe throat pain, and difficulty breathing can make people feel very unwell. They might appear anxious or restless. Children with epiglottitis often refuse to lie down and may seem irritable or scared. Voice changes are another symptom to watch for. As the throat swells, the voice can become muffled or hoarse. In severe cases, the person might lose their voice entirely or only be able to whisper. The rapid onset of these symptoms is a key feature of epiglottitis. Unlike a common cold or flu, which might develop over days, epiglottitis symptoms often worsen within hours. Before we continue, if you have been finding the video helpful so far, 
hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this. Diagnosis of epiglottitis. Diagnosing epiglottitis requires quick thinking and careful assessment. Doctors need to be alert to the possibility of epiglottitis when someone comes in with severe throat pain and breathing difficulties. The first step is usually a careful medical history and physical examination. However, doctors have to be very cautious when examining the throat. Pressing down on the tongue or trying to look at the back of the throat can sometimes cause the airway to close completely in severe cases. Imaging tests play a crucial role in diagnosing epiglottitis. A lateral neck x-ray is often the first test done. This x-ray can show a swollen epiglottis, which looks like a thumb sticking up in the throat. Doctors call this the thumb sign. However, x-rays aren't always conclusive. In some cases, a CT scan might be needed to get a clearer picture of what's happening in the throat. The most definitive way to diagnose epiglottitis is to look at the epiglottis directly. This is done using a flexible camera called a laryngoscope, but this procedure can be risky if the throat is very swollen. It's usually only done in a controlled setting, where immediate help is available if breathing problems occur. Blood tests are often done to help confirm the diagnosis and identify the cause. These tests can show signs of infection, like an elevated white blood cell count. Blood cultures might be taken to try to identify the specific bacteria causing the problem. However, culture results can take several days, so treatment usually starts before these results are available. Treatment for epiglottitis Treating epiglottitis focuses on two main goals, keeping the airway open and fighting the underlying cause. Because epiglottitis can quickly lead to a completely blocked airway, it's treated as a medical emergency. People with suspected epiglottitis are usually admitted to an intensive care unit or a place where they can be closely watched. The most critical part of treatment is managing the airway. In severe cases, this might mean inserting a breathing tube. This procedure, called intubation, involves passing a tube through the mouth or nose into the windpipe. It ensures that air can still reach the lungs even if the throat swells shut. In some very severe cases, doctors might need to create a surgical airway by making an opening in the neck. This procedure, called a tracheostomy, is only done if other methods fail. Once the airway is secure, treatment focuses on fighting the infection or other cause of the swelling. Antibiotics are usually given through a vein. Doctors often start with broad-spectrum antibiotics that can fight many types of bacteria. They might change the antibiotics later if they identify a specific bacteria causing the problem. Steroids are often used to help reduce swelling in the throat. These powerful anti-inflammatory medications can help symptoms improve more quickly. However, there's still some debate among doctors about the best way to use steroids in epiglottitis. People with epiglottitis also receive supportive care. This might include intravenous fluids to prevent dehydration, especially if swallowing is difficult. Pain medication is usually given to help manage the severe throat pain. Oxygen might be provided if breathing is difficult. As the person starts to recover, doctors carefully monitor their ability to breathe on their own. If a breathing tube was placed, removing it, also known as extubation, is done cautiously. Doctors want to be sure the swelling has gone down enough that the person can breathe safely on their own. The outlook for people with epiglottitis has improved greatly over the years. With prompt diagnosis and proper treatment, most people recover fully. The condition usually improves within a week or so. However, epiglottitis can still be life-threatening if not recognized and treated quickly. This is why it's crucial to seek medical help right away if someone shows signs of epiglottitis. Now, we want to hear from you. Do you or someone you know have epiglottitis? What treatments did you have? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We love to hear them. Thanks for watching.